start this lesson by looking at the histogram given and determine whether it represents a normal distribution. All right, write it three, at least three lines to justify your answer. So pause the video and then start it again once you have your answer. All right, for this distribution, I would say, no, this is not a normal distribution. I think looking at this class over here and this class to the left, so the furthest left and the furthest right class, uh, those are not symmetric. Right? When, we, when we look at this at first, it looks like it fits a lot of those characteristics of the normal distribution, but uh, it does not look symmetric. So I would say, no, this is not normal because it is not symmetric. Right, we could look at some of the uh, other characteristics of it. Um, one of them being we, we don't we don't really have the smooth curve so we can't tell if it is a if there are inflection points either. So let's let's continue on. So, looking at the normal distribution, there's an, an infinite number of them. Right? We looked at the formula for a normal distribution, and it is defined by the mean and the standard deviation. Right? And there's a lot of different data sets, a lot of different possible means for the distribution, a lot of different standard deviations for the distribution, and then so many combinations between the means and the standard deviations. Right? So, the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one is called the standard normal distribution. All right, and we're going to spend some time looking at this distribution. So the horizontal scale of the standard normal distribution corresponds to z-scores. Right? And just recall our z-score formula. We take our data value minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So here's our definition of the standard normal distribution, and you can see it's sketched here. The center of our distribution, which is the mean, is centered right at a z-score of zero. Now, since it is a normal distribution, it still holds that the area under the curve is one. And if we look at our negative one and positive one, these are our z-scores of negative one and a z-score of positive one. This means this is one standard deviation above the mean, and this is one standard deviation below the mean. And we also know since this is a normal distribution, those are inflection points of this normal curve. So here are some properties of the standard normal distribution. First of all, the cumulative area is close to zero for z scores close to z equals negative 3.49. So we're actually looking about here. Right? It says the, the, the cumulative area, meaning from negative infinity, summing the areas up all the way from negative infinity coming in towards negative 3.49, that cumulative area is very close to zero right? because that our curve is very, very, very close to the x-axis. Then the cumulative area increases as the z-scores increase. Right, since it's cumulative area, we keep totaling all of this area as we move along the curve. So, let's see here. The key, for number three, the cumulative area for z equals zero is 0.5. So z equals zero, that's our mean. Right? Since that's exactly in the middle and this is symmetric, if we look at just the cumulative area, that would be totaling all of the area to the left is zero. That's one half. And finally, the cumulative area is close to one for all z scores close to z equals 3.49. So if we look about here, right, the cumulative area is pretty close to one there. It means the majority of our data values, nearly all of them, are less than a z score of 3.49. All right, so the question comes up, why, why should we use this standard normal distribution whenever we have all of the normal distributions, uh, or each data set could have its own normal distribution? And the reason is because finding those probabilities, finding those areas under the curve, are not very easy. 
right? We had that formula in the first section, and that, that formula didn't look so nice. Here is, here is the formula for the standard normal distribution, right? and below that is the formula we had in the last class for any normal distribution. Also, we have a table that will give us probability, probabilities of the standard normal distribution, and the calculator will also find standard normal values for us pretty easily. So this is why we, we talk about the standard normal distribution and why we use it so much um, compared to just any normal distribution. So for the rest of this section we're going to actually look at finding areas under the curve and and already we've talked about how finding the areas under the normal curve actually correspond to probabilities as well. So if we're, we want to find the area to the left of z equals 0.84 so 0.84, I'll kind of sketch that in on our normal curve right about here. So this would be 0.84. And we're looking to the left. So I'm going to just go ahead and shade the normal curve to the left. Now when we want to find the area of that, we can use our normal distribution table. So here's our normal distribution table, and we are looking at 0.84. So we take our normal distribution table. Now this, looking at the top, this is the table of values represent the area to the left of the z-score that we look up. So we want to the left of 0.84. Now what we do is we find the ones digit and the tenths digit along the left-hand side, and then we find the hundredths digit at the top. Now one side of the table has all negative z-scores, so we need to look at the other side of the table to get the positive z-scores. We're looking at 0.84, so I come on the left-hand side to 0.8, and along the top to 0.04. So together, this number right here represents the, air, the cumulative area to the left of the z-score, 0.84. And this probability um, from the table goes to five decimal places. Uh, our answer, we can round that to four decimal places, so it would be 0.7996 when we go back to answer the question. Right, so 0.7996 is our answer there. So going on to the next example, we have to the right of z equals uh, 0.84. So again, same. We're looking at the same z score, but this time we're looking to the right. Now we already know looking this up, this area over here was 0.7996. And just like binomial probabilities before, or, or any of the other discrete probabilities we looked at, we want the opposite of that, or the complement. So any time we want the area to the right, we do 1 minus 0.7996. And that gives us 0 0.2004 as the area to the right of the z-score, 0.84. So in the next example, we are looking to find the area under the normal curve between two z-scores. So here we have a z-score of negative 1.02 is really close to negative 1, negative 1.02, and 0.26. It'll be around here, 0.26. So now we need to go to our z-score table and look up both values and subtract them. So let's get our table again. All right, so we need 0 0.26 and 0.26 is right here. So 0 0.6026 when we round that. 
and then we look up the negative 1.02 value, so I go to the other side of the table, we have 0 0.10 going all the way to the top, or in the third column it looks like, so 0 0.102 right here. So we have 0.1539. Alright, so let's go back to the problem. Right, we take 0.26 minus Well, we take the, the corresponding values, areas for these values. So we take the 0 0.6026 minus 0.1539, and we end up with 0.4487. And the reason we subtract this is because this first value is giving us the area of everything. to the left of 0.26 but we don't want that we want to stop at point or sorry stop at negative 1.02 so we want to subtract this area out right, so we subtract this area and that leaves us with what is between them very similar to how we did uh, discrete probability problems so now on the next example we're going to try to use the calculator. Right? And the graphing calculator um, uses the normal CDF button, and again this is you do second and distribution, and then and use option number two for the normal CDF. And all we do is we put our minimum and our maximum. Now on the normal curve, since the normal curve goes on forever and ever in both directions, uh, will approximate negative infinity with negative 10,000 and approximate positive infinity with positive 10,000. So, let's go back. Alright, so in this example, we're looking at z, the area to z is greater than negative 2.01, so that would be to the right. right? So I go here to negative 2.01 and we're looking to the right. So on the calculator, I hit second distribution, choose, choose option number two for normal CDF, and we want to use the minimum. Now our minimum is right here, negative 2.01. So I have negative 2.01, and our maximum, since it goes on forever and ever in the positive direction, uh, we just type in 10,000. Right? Now we know from the properties of the standard normal distribution that once we get up to a z-score of 3.49 we pretty much have all of our data values there. We have almost all of our area there. But we still, since the calculator is doing the work for us, we can go all the way up to positive 10,000 um, for the estimate of going on forever. And when we enter that into the calculator we find that we get 0.9778. So, next we are looking to the left of, of 1.13. Sketch 1.13 right here. And we're looking to the left. So in the calculator, we'll type in normal CDF. We're going to the left, so we want to approximate this with negative 10,000. So we do negative 10,000 comma 1.13, and we get 0 0.8708. Okay. On the next problem we're looking to the right of negative 0 0.035. So we're going to be here pretty close to the mean, negative 0 0.035.
we're going to the right because we're looking greater than. So we approximate this with 10,000. And when we go to use the normal CDF, we start at negative 0 0.035, comma, 10,000. And that equals 0 0.5140. And one of the benefits to using the calculator versus using the table is that we can type in a z-score of 0 0.035, whereas on the table, we only go to two decimal places. So we would have to come down here to 0 0.03 and 0 0.04, and we would want to average, well, we would want to average these two values. And the last example we are looking at between negative 1.04 and 2.01. So we use our normal CDF again. And we just use the, the z-scores that they give us. Negative 1.04, comma, 2.01. Let's get that entered in. You'll see that this comes out to 0 0.8286. All right, so now go on to the practice problems. You can use the calculator or try the, uh, try the normal distribution table. So pause the video and then restart it again when you're ready to see the answers. All right, we'll take a look at these answers to these problems pretty quickly. Uh, first one, to the left of z equals uh, negative 0 0.54. So... So if you're using the calculator, again, we want, we want the normal CDF. Since we're looking to the left, we want negative 10,000 comma negative 0.54, and this is 0.2946. Over here in number 9, we want to the right of the z-score negative 1.27. Looking to the right this time. So we want normal CDF negative 1.27 comma 10,000. Right. And this equals 0 0.8980. And our last few problems here, uh, looking at the area to the left of 2.82. This is this is really getting pretty far out there. Uh, this is going to be pretty close to one. We want normal CDF negative 10,000 comma 2.82 this equals 0.9976 for the next problem looking at greater than so that's to the right of 0 0.06 this is going to be very close to 2 we would expect this to be close to 1 half since our z-score is very close to zero. So we want normal CDF zero to 10,000. This ends up being 0 0.4761, so that is close to one half. And finally, here we are looking at z-score of zero to a z-score of 1.82. 
Right. So we end up looking at this area in the middle. So we do our normal CDF 0, 1.82, and we end up with an area of 0.4656. Uh, just one last note, when you're typing these into the calculator, it is important that the numbers that we're entering in are from least to greatest. Right. If you ever switch these numbers, whether it's a problem where we have both z-scores or back where we have to use one of the negative 10,000 or positive 10,000, if you type those into the calculator in the wrong order, you're going to get a negative area. Right? The, and we don't, and uh, since we're talking about area here, or we're talking about, and we're going to be talking about probabilities later, we know we definitely don't want a negative number there. So just make sure that you are typing the the least number first, and then you're typing in the greatest number second.